Well, many thanks, Helena. And thank you to the entire team at Columbia University's Beijing Global Center. Thank you for working on these technical challenges. And it's a great privilege to be talking to all of you today. Greetings from the United States, and I hope everybody who's listening is healthy and safe in these very difficult times. Today, we're in the middle of two global crises. The first crisis is the COVID-19 pandemic, which has dramatically disrupted the lives of billions of people around the world in the past few months. This is a public crisis of pretty sick and millions of people. And tragically, it's killed more than 100,000 people worldwide. Unfortunately, many experts say this pandemic will be with us for months and perhaps years to come. The second crisis is climate change, which moves much more slowly than COVID-19, but is just as dangerous. Indeed, in several ways, it is more dangerous. Climate change is bringing heat waves, intense storms, droughts and floods, and sea level rise. It contributes to the spread of some infectious diseases. And climate change is happening now. Globally, the five warmest years ever recorded have been the past five years. In China, hundreds of heat records have been broken in recent years including the warmest temperature ever recorded in China. 50.3 degrees in Xinjiang on a day in July in 2015. In August and September of 2018, record rains fell in parts of Guangdong, requiring the evacuation of more than 200,000 people. In 2017, Inner Mongolia experienced the worst drought on record. And there are many more examples to list of impacts of climate change across China and the world goes on. Indeed, China is one of the most vulnerable countries in the world to sea level rise. More than 550 million people live in China's coastal provinces. It's one of the most densely populated places on Earth. Hundreds of millions of people in those provinces are threatened by sea level rise caused by global warming in the decades ahead. So we must fight both the pandemic and climate change. In the short term, the COVID-19 economic activities are reduced. But this is a short-term phenomenon. Indeed, there's a risk that pandemic will make the climate change problem worry high-carbon technologies. We must not let that happen. There are many opportunities for green, low-carbon economic recovery. I hope the governments all around the world will seize those opportunities. The Chinese government is especially well positioned to promote green, low carbon growth in its economic recovery plans. People's Bank of China has been a global leader on green finance. If PBOC and all Chinese financial institutions apply green finance principles in their recovery programs, that would make a huge difference. China is the world's leader in electric vehicles. A national program to expand electric vehicle infrastructure will create many good jobs. China is also the world's leader in solar power, which is now cheaper than coal power in many situations. Expanding support for solar power would also create many good jobs. And China's coal plants are operating at roughly half of capacity today significantly below the global average. A program to close underutilized coal power plants and convert them to other uses would create many new jobs as well. 
There are many other options for promoting a green, low-carbon recovery. I'm sure other speakers will offer more ideas today. In closing, I'd like to discuss U.S.-China relations, which have been very challenging in the past year. I think our two countries can do better. In fighting global challenges such as COVID-19 and climate change, we are stronger working together than working alone. Two great powers will always have their differences. Sometimes those differences will be serious. But we must find ways to work together when it is in both our interests and in the interest of the rest of the world. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I wish everyone good health and every success for the rest of this session. Many thanks.